how many of us give up on something we do with the mission to change other people's life ex naval officer a president's gold medalist who left the navy for another good cause to be a medical clown for cancer patients and other children he has managed to make people happy for more than 17 years now please welcome our today's guest mr pravin tulpale you have been serving the country for a long time so why did you actually think to join navy what was the thought that came into your mind uh what do you say providence or uh, i did not have i mean okay there was a little urge in my mind as a young boy perhaps that i should do something i should wear some uniform i mean i would have been happy perhaps even wearing a firefighter's uniform like that because uniforms fascinated me uh, the turning point was when my sister got married to a naval officer and uh, if you don't mind the cliche normally they say that there is the girls who fall for the white uniform or something like that but in my case uh, i got carried away i mean had my brother in law been perhaps in the air force i would have got into the air force so i had no particular uh, liking or dislike for any of the three services but since he was in the navy and then we visited a couple of his ships where he was posted and all those things that certainly created an impression on me okay and uh, fortunately i come from a family where there has been no pressure as to what i should be following I, we were allowed to pursue our hobbies and this thing without any prejudice so long as it was uh, legal right and it was not going to hurt anybody or myself so it was not too dangerous or something we were perfectly clear to do anything that we wanted so that also helped yeah so it's it's nice to uh, choose your own path without any uh, thought or without any knowing that everything pressure. is going to be okay and there is no pressure from home yeah i mean whenever you try to start or you attempt anything you always want everything to be okay you your parents your well wishers but then all things do not go the way you want them to you got to be right. prepared for those too right that's part of life that's part of growing up right exactly so during your experience uh, mm-hmm. is there any particular incident or any particular experience that has changed your perspective towards things in the navy you would mean uh, in not only in the navy during your entire journey or entire uh, to an entire 60 61 62 years that yeah. i've been on this earth uh, there have been many instances where they have left impressions on me which are perhaps shaping me even today and they will continue to shape me as i go uh as a child like i said the basic thing that we had a uh, freedom to choose what we did so long as we did not hurt anybody or it was affordable to my parents right i think the same thing we followed with uh, my children so that helped me become a better parent perhaps right or when i was in the academy as a divisional officer there training the young minds and going back to alma mater uh, that also played a little role that yes they may not be much older uh, much younger than you are i mean some of them were hardly about 4 years 5 years younger than i was right but uh, for them i was a role model right. i was a president's gold medalist my name was there on the board so i had to maintain uh, my character i had to be in character at all times in uniform of course so that i don't let down the name that has been put there on the board right and create a create an idol for them of sorts and this thing continued then like uh, i was saying you don't expect everything to fall you want exp- everything to fall in place but at times it doesn't right believe me i cleared my upsc and uh, ssb and medicals and everything in my first attempt oh lovely and i was selected uh, yeah and i was and without much of a preparation i mean it was just that in the routine stuff we just used to have one thick book and that was a big thing because the book that we studied or referred to was a book that gave us question and answers in the written form in the essay form right. earlier at the time but when i actually went to appear for the exam it was the multiple choice thing so right. though it was easy it was a risk yes Uh, i got through and like i said though we want things to go right way 
everything happened i was on the list and i could not join because i was somewhere on the waiting list 7th or 8th perhaps and normally people do drop out after being selected also in the academy people do drop out this was the 60th course nda and i was just waiting that some some enough people drop out and i join in that was not to be and i went back to college from where i had taken my leaving certificate <laughs> can imagine you yeah. told the entire world you're leaving you're going to the military you're going to join the navy and all that stuff and two months later you take admission for your first year college right that happened then i lost a little interest in the thing you think uh who is going to try i think i made one more attempt and i failed i didn't even clear the written exam okay for the nda and my nda ka nda age limit had crossed hmm. and then i said no i've got to do something this is i've decided and then after my graduation i appeared for the cds the combined defense services exam a uh, special entry it is called and then i cleared my ss my uh, written test my ssb and i got into the navy and believe me i was 22 that time that was my last possible attempt to join the navy so first attempt i cleared beautifully but could not enter and last attempt i made it frankly so i lost two years of uh, service in that market but it's okay i think that was meant to me for me yes uh, no regrets this time no that regrets. way <laughs> exactly so that is what i learned also that you might have been uh, making plans and everything but destiny perhaps had uh, different dice to roll for me right and after that the navy was very kind to me the navy has the navy actually separates out the boys and the men and if they find some boys they make men out of those boys also so even at 22 frankly speaking the service way i was still a boy and groomed that way perhaps a little english is what what i knew but the navy groomed me they they made a man a gentleman out of me right so i owe that to the navy learning processes at times especially in the services you are molded very nicely and about 23 24 you are made in charge of a group of people right most of them who are older than you in terms of age and experience but you still got to command them you got to guide them yes at the same time you have to take them into confidence that you are new and they have the experience you got they have got to hold hands with each other and we go ahead as a team so though you show your uh, seniority to them you still you should have the humility to go along with them and accept certain suggestions or things that they may give thanks to the experience right this is what this is what perhaps takes a little while to understand in the corporate world right. and you're given the responsibility of life and i mean men material everything regarding the border either on the seas or the land at a very young age right so that develops a lot of confidence in you it makes you like i said uh, you never falter while talk. i mean you might stammer i mean you get you get stuck for words but given a chance you will take the podium you will take the stand and talk to 100 people without actually flinching an eyelid right you know you can do it and somebody has to do it and people look up to you even yeah. today if i am in a crowd and there's something to be done now that i got long, long life mustaches people realize that your forgy hai perhaps he'll handle it if you are given the mic you'll take care of it you could uh, compare a show you could introduce a show you can introduce an act introduce people be nice to them the navy also teaches you how to be nice and uh, handle ladies gracefully whenever they are in public so all these things yes the navy has taught me this is all learning experience yeah so it's actually lovely so from your navy life to a civilian mm-hmm. life and then to a happy clown what motivated you to start your mission happiness okay so mission happiness technically has not started it's still in the pipeline i'm still drawing is on a drawing board and uh, but mission happiness has got a background uh we got to go back to 1974 perhaps where this all started like i told you there was no restriction on us to pursue a hobby and i picked up a lovely hobby called magic 
those days. Never ever did I actually think that I would become a professional magician or a performer. Okay. It was just something like a young teenager loves to do. Everybody likes to do magic, not because it is magic, because it gives you a sense of control or being able to fool others right under their noses. It makes you look smarter. See, I can do this right under your nose or eyes and you cannot catch me. I am smart. Yeah. Right? What better thrill can you get as a teenager? I was 13 years of age that time. Okay. So that fortunately continued. My parents also did not object to that. And it was never a question of becoming a professional because there were hardly any professional magicians those days. Right. Even today, there are hardly, there are better numbers today of professional magicians who survive solely on magic, but far and few, you can actually count them on your fingertips. So this hobby remained with me through school, through college, through my naval career initially during training and otherwise. And anything, everything happening there, there was always, the unit knew there is Praveen who could entertain children, who can become a glorified babysitter or perhaps take care of the picnic. And so without my realizing, the Navy was training me to do all these things. There was an unofficial portfolio perhaps for me that, okay, entertainer. Right. Okay, so that helped me. And then one fine day, one lady calls me up and says, hey, Praveen, we are entertaining a group of children on a Sunday. Would you mind coming and uh, playing along, do some magic and all? I said, yeah, gladly. It was a Sunday evening, so no issues. And just while we had those cradle phones those days, I'm talking about the year 2000. Okay. We didn't have yeah, mobile phones. Right, right. <laughs> that is, I didn't have mobile phones. <laughs> just I was keeping the phone down and that lady said, hey, Praveen, can you come in that colorful getup and that red nose and all? That at the time I had started experimenting with a clown character. I'll explain why I was doing that. And I said, yes, why not? And like they say, fools fly in where angels uh, dread to tread. I made a commitment without realizing what I'm walking into. Now, why that clown thing and all? Let me just go back a little in perspective. Like I said, everybody likes to fool others. But how often would you like me to fool you? Especially right. with magic and track, every two minutes I'm telling you, hey, you stupid, you can't understand what I'm doing. See, I, this is what I'm doing, you can't catch me, see? It's so funny. After the second trick or maximum the third, you're going to turn away. Right. Unless I make you a party to it. Right? That you do the, you say the magic words, you move your hands in a mystical way and the magic happens. Then you own the magic and not me. Again, trying to see that if at all there's a joke, a gag in the trick or the effect, let it be on me. It's always better to be the fall guy and take the fall and let people laugh at you rather than make the entire 300, 200 people laugh at one poor soul who's on the stage with you. Right. That is where I was coming from. And then I said, then I don't need to be a magician. I can be an awkward clown, a goofy clown who forgets his magic spells, who forgets his magic, he forgets his routine, he miscalls things, he calls red, blue, he calls a boy, a girl. And people correct. Now, that is another thing which gives you control. If I'm calling a boy, a girl, and the entire audience says, no, he's a boy. And they've corrected me. Right. And people take a lot of happiness in correcting others. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So this was all playing on me, and I agreed to that thing to go on that Sunday. And it was when I reached there, I was shocked. I was not prepared for it, frankly. I see a group of children, about 25, 30 children. Some of them wearing masks, some of them wearing a cap, no hair, obviously. Today, mask is a very common thing. If somebody not wearing a mask, you'll be allowed. Yeah. But those days, and those masks used to be very different. There used to be those stiff green colored masks the typical medical masks. I went there to realize that I've been invited to entertain a bunch of cancer patients, some of oh. them terminal. Now, it's a very difficult situation. See, suppose tomorrow I fall sick and you happen to be in the neighborhood 
and you come to know Praveen is admitted to a hospital. So you come all the way from the reception to my ward and come back without noticing any of the other patients who are in that area, right? right. Because you came only to see Praveen. Not that you are you're insensitive or something, but you had a job, you had to come see Praveen, uh, tell him get well soon and go back. But when you are expected to entertain a bunch of children in the hospital, in the room, you have to maintain eye contact with everybody. You have to connect with everybody. And I had never seen such a big gathering of cancer patients ever in my life until then. I was just coming close to 40 at that time. I was in two minds. Should I take a step back? Tell that lady who had invited me, saying, sorry, ma'am, I made a mistake. I'm a fool. I'm not prepared for this. Or do what the Navy had taught me to do. Since I had committed, I had the props with me, I had the wherewithal with me. Go ahead, confidently put up a brave front and do what I was expected to do. I did exactly that. I went forward, we did the show. During the show, we had a lovely time. There was one particular child who got very, very friendly with me, very familiar. He was not scared of a cloud, but they're on five, six years of age. People actually thought he's one of my team because he was tagging along, he was putting his hands in my pocket, he was trying to go to the table and see what have I hidden inside the magic box and all that stuff. And we took pictures and all, everything went uh, okay. We said thank yous and we went back home or the hospital or the shelter that they had come from. A couple of days later, that lady called up in the morning to say, Praveen, just check the newspapers. See so what happened? This is you and that young boy that were playing with you. You have been featured on page four or page seven or whatever. Obviously, not page one and three. Yeah, right. <laughs> so we checked, and actually, yes, I was there in a black and white picture, me and the child. And I, I was in seventh heaven. In that small community of mine, in that unit that I was there, about 20 or 25 officers, I took a Xerox, I put it in a plastic sheet, and in the coffee club around 11 o'clock. I circulated it all over just to say, see, I have become world famous. I mean, a big thing for a clown or a naval officer to be featured in a newspaper, even if it was in a black and white thing. And by the evening, by my kids had seen the picture and all, and it was forgotten. Two days later, that lady called up again. And before she could say anything, I told her, uh, yeah, I wanted to say thank you to that child if you can connect me to him, because it was not my picture that was important. Right. The media put up the picture because of him. I was just a prop along with him. Right. So I should say thank you to him. And she says, Praveen, actually, that is the reason I called up to tell you that child is no more. Oh. And that came as a shock, obviously. That two days back, you met the child, you had a good time, he played with you, you played with him, showed magic, enjoyed. So when we were talking to the lady, she said the child was a terminal child. He was on his way out. Perhaps he could have, with the medicine and everything, he would have survived for six months, one year, but would have been in trouble. I mean, he would be in pain and suffering. So one way it is good he went, but she continued to tell me that, Praveen, you would be surprised to know that this child had a small wish list. What we call today a to-do list. Yeah. Or bucket list. He had a small wish list wherein one of the items, may not be number one or number last, but one of the items said that he wanted to meet a joker from a circus. And that actually stuck there with me. So point one was that if I had not met the child, perhaps he would have been surviving that particular day that I was talking to him, with that lady. A big question mark. And how much he would have suffered in the bargain, we do not know. But after I met him, perhaps did we hasten up the process of his leaving us? In that, there was a little satisfaction that, okay, perhaps a soul that was leaving us I could give him some happiness. I could make him a little happy before he left. And that is the time I realized now I should leave the Navy. This is my calling. This is where I should 
be a clown spreading happiness around people, not just fooling people, not just showing them tricks, but making them happy with whatever I do. I may not always do tricks. You don't have to do magic to make people happy. Like right. you don't have to tickle people to make them happy. Right. Or tell them a joke or flatter them or something. Making happy the people happy is a very different concept. I'll share with you later on. And that is how my clown was born. And I realized that I should be calling myself happy. Because unless I am happy, I cannot make others happy. Right. It's like if I have a bag that is empty, I can't give out anything out of that. But if my bag is full, even partly full, there is something for me to give out to people, to share with people. It, it, it is actually, and it is very motivating and very uh, nice to know that, you know, in the world where we concentrate so much on ourselves, you at least go out and pick some time to just spread happiness, and which is commendable. I love doing that. And especially like uh, one of the places, you must have read it in most uh, interviews or heard about everywhere, that if I go to an NGO or a hospital or a shelter or something, I do not charge money from them. That's there. So one thing that you would like to uh, advise people or tell people through your experience and how would you like to tell them to be happy? Like I said, you can be happy only when you make other people happy. It's a rule that I follow that if I'm making somebody happy, I can sleep much better that night. Even if I make two people smile in a day, I my day is done. What makes people happy really is one, recognizing their presence. By that I mean if I'm traveling in a bus or if I'm checking into the hotel and if I tap the shoulder of the valet person there and tell him thank you so much. He's doing his job, of course. He's getting paid for it. But if I tell him thank you so much, it was so kind of you to get my car here or tell that lady at the reception that you did a wonderful job. Though I do follow a little uh, different uh, tack. Actually, I carry a messenger bag or a cross shoulder bag and I carry about uh, 10-15 chocolates in there. A very simple example if I'm uh, checking out of a hotel my car has come the valet has brought it for me to sit in the car typical my mentality I'll say no, I'll, worry. I'll have to tip this guy now okay it's a pattern now how much should I tip 20? 20 is too much I spent 5,000 rupees in the hotel for myself and my family, right? But giving 20 rupees to this boy, I might cringe. Right. Why should I give him? He's doing his job. Most of us do think. I used to, I used to think like that. Okay. Right. I said, what is the easier way out for myself and my pocket? And when I do that, I find out the dirtiest of the notes, which is perhaps even torn and restuck. And fold it quietly. And when he gives me the key, I very sheepishly shake his hand and transfer that untold amount to him. He also sees here and there, nobody's watching, he puts it in his pocket. And first opportunity is going to look at it like that and say, 10 rupees. Right? Just to get the feeling? Right, right. Now, instead of that, as soon as I sit in my uh, seat, I belt up, I lower the window, I tell him, thank you so much. I put my hand in my pocket, take out a nice five-star or a typical similar chocolate and give it to him without hiding it. His face lights up. Right. He's now taking a chocolate. He's not taking a tip. Right. He's taking a chocolate with me. And at times I've had things where he says, I've got two children, give me one more. <laughs> Until now, I have not seen someone doing like this. Go ahead and just spread happiness randomly. So it's very nice. And I wish you all the best for your uh, mission. Thank you so yeah. much for your time, sir. Have a I good should time. be saying that. Thank you so much for the yeah. Bye-bye.